course of that event starting on September 27th and 28th with something that I know means an awful lot to you. The C.J. Rayburn Memorial and the Jackson 100 kicks off the chase for the championship yeah, this year. Yeah, 50K to the end. Then with the, the High Limit Sprint Car Series. Yeah, that's Atomic a lot of Speed fun. On October 1st, I believe that's a Tuesday night. Uh, the Pittsburgher, Michael, 4th and 5th, 50K to win. Then the East Bay Finale, the Grand Finale, 50K to win. And then Tony Stewart's Eldora Speedway, $100,000 to win. The reason I love that so much, you get the quarter mile of Brownstown, you right. get a little bigger of Atomic, the big old half mile of East Bay, or Pittsburgh, back down to East Bay. The yeah. There are going to be people taking blue bleacher seats that night, peeling them up and taking them and clods of dirt from East Bay. And then we're, we finish only fittingly as we can. At, uh, I thought the, the Modifieds were going to close it down last night. That was, <laughs> well, between them and the hey, crates. God we, bless them. They were all there trying their best. But, uh, you know, and uh, good luck to Larry Jewett over there and uh, Chris Stepp and uh, running that show this week. But we'll be there starting on Monday night for six nights there. Yes, 91 sir. crates last 91 week. Crates. I think it was 72 or 73, 75, 76, 75 Modifieds yeah. last yeah. night. Uh, and those guys, listen, those guys want a, a slice of the final East Bay Apple, right? This is the last time they're ever going to get a run there, and and I think they're enjoying it, it seems like, anyway. They've been you crashing each other a yeah, lot, next I know. week, six races there, and the first three are non-points races, but there's still going to be a lot of guys running that have never won at East Bay. Why not? Why not better way to put that on your mantle than a than a checkered flag from East Bay in the final year? You see Rick Eckert there talking to Richie Lewis. Rick Eckert, get, you know Ross Robinson's running pretty pretty good down yes. here. He, he is helping Ross and Amanda all during speed weeks. I said if you keep running like this, Ross, that that's <laughs> scrub twenty four is not going to be able to leave. He's going to have to do all sixty five <laughs> Lucas races. Well, another thing too is Amanda's going to run the first three nights at East Bay. Yeah, which is cool. It's just cool, and uh, that's pretty neat. We're going to find we'll out who's the better Robinson. <laughs> That's right. Well, you should uh, – upcoming live events here on Flow, of course, uh, the rest of Speed Weeks for the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. we got some other things too, Mike. Yeah, Brett Deo's Short Track Super Series. Uh, Lucas will be at Alltech this week. Next week, the Short Track Super Series, February 6th through the 10th, will be there. And then I'm really excited about this. February 8th through the 10th down in Bradenton, Florida, the biggest drag racing event in the history of Flow Sports, the Pro Superstar Shootout. John Force, Erica Enders, the best drag racers on the planet will be on Flow Sports February 8th through the 10th down at Bradenton. I'm going in the morning, James, and coming back at East Bay at night. It's only about an hour from East Bay. Is Tony going to be in that? Tony will be there. Yes, Tony okay. and Tony okay. and, and his entire team. The USAC uh, Winter Dirt Games right back here at Bubba and Volusia with a couple mixed in there. High Limit Season Opener, Brad Sweet and Kyle Larson's 410 Sprint Car Series will be the final, uh, not the final sprint car races at East Bay ever, but the final 410 sprint car races there ever, February 12th and 13th. And if we want to call it Speed Weeks or not, I do know that February for the tour wraps up when those two things combine, High Limit and Lucas, back at Gold Niles, February 22nd, 23rd, and 24th for the first time ever, James. The High Limit Lucas Oil Partnership kicks off back at Steve Stevenson's Gold Mile Speedway. That is going to be a phenomenal show, two of the premier services in, in the pre series in America. All right, Michael, thank you very much. We'll be back uh, coming up next. We will have Dirt Draft High Laps for the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Again, 40 cars in here tonight. You're watching it all live here on Mav TV on Flow Racing. We are from Ocala Speedway in Ocala, Florida. Protect the Harvest was created to defend preserve American freedoms and to support farmers, ranchers, outdoor enthusiasts, and animal owners. Protecting agriculture, protecting our rights, our traditions, our rural way of life, protecting America. To get involved, please visit our Facebook page or protecttheharvest.com. Support us by donating today. Protect the Harvest is a nonprofit 501c3 corporation registered in Missouri. What are you up to? Oh, I just spent the whole morning having a little battery-powered fun. I can see that. This thing is powerful. Hey, honey, I was just gushing about our new favorite toy. All right, Joel, ready to go again? You should join us sometime. <laughs> Race fans, Dirt Draft is your number one fantasy racing app. Play along with hundreds of events each year featuring the biggest stars in series and racing. Draft your team each race night and compete against hundreds of fans across the country. Or start your private league to battle your friends for the ultimate racing rights. Accumulate points each race night and cash those points in for top prizes from the biggest brands. Sign up today and learn more at DirtDraft.com or download a Google Play or the App Store. Dirt Draft, your fantasy racing edge.
Welcome back to the Lucas Oil Late Monitor Series here on MAF TV on Flow Racing. James Essex, Michael Rigsby, Ben Shelton with us here tonight. And again, coming up, we will have Dirt Draft Hot Laps. Michael, are you on Dirt Draft? I don't know if I've ever asked you that. I am. DJ and Ben tease me a lot because I think in my life, and by the way, all due respect to the, the fine folks at Dirt Draft, I've done it like one time. I, I, I'm just not any good at it. And DJ is always obsessing about his hobby stock lineup from some Iowa track on Dirt Draft that so, night. So you don't want to put on X your uh, password or anything? <laughs> so somebody else could use your account, right? I do not. I do not. Looks like we got cars on the track, James Essex. Are we ready to go? How about Boom Briggs? I said this earlier. If Boom, Boom is going to be the first qualifier tonight. If he ever wins a national touring race, would he just – in victory lane, I can just see him. That's it. I'm done. I'm retiring. Yes. I don't see that, but I'm just saying. I don't think it's that far-fetched, actually. He, you know, he's getting a lot of help from Mark Richards this year. He practiced down here and said he felt as good as he's ever felt headed into a speed weeks. Uh, so uh, he might quit that night, James. You're right. Yeah, the Dave Warren uh, Power Sports Brick Transport 99B. Behind them, the 79 car, the double nickel for Billy Hicks Racing. That is Donald McIntosh. Donald McIntosh out of Dawsonville, Georgia. In that 79 car. How about Mark Whitener, the magic man, the Ocala restaurant number five? He's, he's one of those Florida guys that always has his fair share of speed oh, yeah. moments, right? Whether it's at Gold yeah. Niles or, or, or at Volusia, he's, he, will, he will be in the mix at some point before speed weeks is over. Earl Pearson Jr., the Lucas Oil 46 for Jason Round, the BMF chassis. Uh, with us here tonight, four-time series champion, 40 career wins at the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. And Berkey had some hand in it. Of course, that car ran last year at Knoxville with Corey Hedgecock. They just a few weeks ago, of course, got this deal done, put a new body and deck on it. Berkey had help with that. And, uh, of course, Berkey and Jason Round and Earl been friends for a long time. I was our, our own Kyle McFadden did a story yep. on Earl Pearson Jr. and just how this went from a thought to an idea to a probability to a full-flown national tour in about 10 days. They were yeah, able to pull that off. And Earl told me the story again. He called Jason a few weeks ago and said, hey, uh, what about something? Maybe just we'll just do speed weeks and then go from there and just run what it no, I'm going to do the whole season. Uh, Lucas, whole well, that's season. what Jason it's said. Like, he goes, if we're going to do this, let's we're gonna do, do this, we're right? Do the whole yeah. thing. Poncho Lawler's son, that's Corey Lawler running for the, as tended plans to run for the O'Reilly Auto Parts rookie year. I hope he does run the whole season. Brian Shirley, the 3S, in that Bob and Lisa Cullen, he's in a rocket tonight out of Chatham, Illinois. How about Clay Harris, this young man? Brian yeah. Green turned in the wrenches on this six car. He has been impressed. He made the first two shows at Golden Isles. Yeah, qualified for both. Uh, didn't need to come out of, uh, didn't right? need a provisional, didn't need anything like that. He's, he's, I group him in that, that category of guys that's on the rise, right, in our sport. He's a dirt late model name on the rise that, you know, you could see him go to Eldora and he's starting on the pole of the fourth heat race. You can He's that kind of talent, I think. Yeah, a lot of great young talent. Hayden Cowan, Jackson Heiss, who are not with us tonight, but they'll be back with us coming up this week. And Ryan Scott also out there out of Pittsfield, Pennsylvania, the zero car. Brendan Smith, the 17 double S. He is in his father's car, Sean Smith's own car, Dade City, Florida. Garrett Albertson in 58. It's going to happen. It might happen here tonight because I think I think the next two nights you're going to see really. Wouldn't it be neat to see a couple of new winners? Uh, we talked. That to, would be awesome. We talked to Garrett in the pit pass line on our way here today, and, and Garrett was just could see it and feel it in his heart and his mind about how much he would love to get a Speed Weeks victory. He came close again out at the Wild West Shootout in Vado at his home track of Vado Speedway Park. He's not far off, James. He's going to – him and uh, Dalton Wilson both. It's just a matter of time for both of them. And Ross Robinson, you mentioned him running very well with Rick Eckert helping out this weekend. We're going to burn some of the slime off here, and then we're going to bring out another group. We'll put these drivers into the infield here. Avocado-shaped racetrack, ladies and gentlemen. You know, is there another track in the country that's even in the the ballpark of this shape? Well, Ponderosa is more of a D shape. A D, I think, right. Uh, Tanner English said something like Windy Hollow. <laughs> I've, I've never been to Windy Hollow, but he talked about Windy Hollow down there in Owensboro. I'm shocked there wasn't a Northern All-Stars race for you at Windy Hollow or something back in the day. Is that right? Not one? I uh, know we did not <laughs> endeavor to go there. But I miss the Bardstowns and the Glasgow's and yeah. the, the 201s and all of that, obviously. So... So Brian Shirley, he was in the Team Zero car in the first couple of nights at Golden Isles. As we'll get him up to speed here. But a lot of great young talent coming into uh, Dirt Late Model Racing. Uh, I know Ben did a story. Dylan Thornton, not related to Ricky Thornton Jr. running a full Super Late Model at the California driver. But Donald McIntosh in that double neck. There's Corey Lawler. 
the 93 car, the Dry Dean entry. You see Corey Lawler coming out of turns three and four. We've begun our Road to Eldora uh, content pieces. I actually shot one with Bubba Clem today. One of the road pieces on Road to Eldora will be turns three and four at Ocala. Easily, as we've talked about, the most unique turns. And I said to him, "Is how many people try to convince you to change turns three and four here? And he stopped before I could get the question done. And he says, everybody, every race, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but he had Donnie Schatz tell him one time, don't ever change it. Of course, legendary World of Outlaw sprint car driver Donnie Schatz. Don't ever change it uh, because it's so unique. It would just change the attitude of the place, Donnie told him. So I thought I that we, was interesting to see. I think we ended up with about three cars under 14 seconds. I know Jimmy Owens was one of those in the 13 nines. Right now, of course, Clay Harris. As uh, you know, we'll just we won't even mention the times because they're not even they're not even in order anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, nobody's gleaning information from these seventeen uh, yes. times right now. But you're right about practice. I remember, and we it's the same way every time we go to Golden Isles, we go to East Bay. How come you don't televise the practice or what now? If, and we'd have a lot of people watch, right? It would be a little easier in the Chili Bowl because you have to go in there and set up a week ahead of time, right? But uh, a little tougher. We'd add many, many, many nights. <laughs> I, I like the camera, the camera shot that you had <laughs> at the Chili Bowl, right? There's always interesting equipment here, too. There's always yeah, – you're always going to see I have a piece no of idea a, what just came to the end. Thank you, Ben. Help me. <laughs> it's like a – it's like a, a lull or a sky lift, but it's like half of it got ripped off, and it's like a – yeah, I don't know what it is. It's from Misfit Island. Hey, guys, I tell you somebody in the pit area that could get their first ever Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series winner to track like this, and that's Mark Whitener. He's had a lot of success here. He's in really good equipment. He knows it as good as anybody. And, yeah, I mean, what what if it is a Garrett Alberson or a Clay Harris? Uh, I think there's a lot of, of energy in our sport right now, and for, nothing is better than first-time winners. Uh, it's going to be tough because you got the best in the business dueling it out. And like like we say, Michael, everybody's got good equipment. I mean, this ain't like it used to be 20 or 30 years ago. Everybody can buy the best of the best. I was actually struck by that on the first night at Golden Isles when I was walking through the pit area, how there are some guys. And listen, I follow Super Dirt Late Model Racing for a living, and I know virtually all the drivers. But there's a couple guys there with incredible – and some of them turned out to be 602s and 604s – that had incredible equipment. And I was like, I don't know that I've ever seen him race before. And to your point, it, even the guys that aren't Ricky Thornton and Jonathan Davenport and Brandon Shepard and Brian Shirley, even those guys have the best of the best stuff. And they bring it and then they unload it. And, and at the end of the day, though, you still got to try to beat these guys. But you're, you nailed it. You can get the best stuff now. Yeah, I mean, these guys are just the best drivers. I mean, I and nothing against anybody else, but they, they are the, you know, and uh, the competition level in that. And, and you know, like, like you know, the, the sprint cars, the high limit or whatever, that's going to be great as well. And it's like, man, this is uh, – we're living in a great time if you're a driver, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, if you're a sprint no, car or late model driver, this is the best of the best times, right? More money than there has ever been in the sport as far as purses go. Obviously, huge credit to Rick Schwally for what he's done from Lucas Oil. He was – to my opinion, Rick was the first one to really say, all right, these all need to be – we need a bunch of 50s and, and bigger events. And Rick kind of elevated that game. And same thing for sprint cars now, right? They're finally catching up to us late model, are, guys. I love are, to tease Brad are. Sweet and Kyle Larson all the time. They've been behind on purses. Sprint car racing has – uh, but I think with the advent of high limit, some of the stuff the outlaws are doing, it they are they're right there on on the late models. Did scales. we not have three drivers that went over a million dollars in earnings a year ago? Right, uh, Hudson O'Neill, right, right, and uh, Ricky Thorne Jr. and Bobby Pierce. I mean, that's incredible to think about. If that. I had told you in at the Dairy Queen Classic at Brownstown <laughs> in 1996, James, that there'd be three drivers win a million bucks, would you believe me? Well, I think last year we had like seven drivers that made over three hundred thousand dollars. I mean, it's just it's just incredible with the amount of money, the bonus money that's up for grabs. Of course, the Sunoco Road to Wheatland going on again this year. Thanks to Richie Lewis, saw him here earlier. Right, he's here. He Did is. You see yes, yes, that's right. And uh, and uh, for what they do for the Lucas Oil Lay Motor Dirt Series, not only that, but the uh, Snowco North South 100 coming up in August. Get your tickets now, FlorenceSpeedway.com. As the next group of cars on the track, there's the four car, the Pink Panther, Bob Gardner, out of Washington, Illinois. In this group, he has the hopes of running. He was third last year in the Mars Series points by Jason Fager and Mike Harrison. Yeah, also, he, he's kind of teased me. He's got some news after Speed Weeks, he says, about his season and schedule and support. So I'm looking for I don't know what it is. He won't tell me, James. Usually yeah. they break the news with me. How about the Hoist B5 there, the real tree entry, the uh, Longhorn factory car. That is Brandon Shepard out of New Berlin, Illinois, the defending Dirt Track World Champion, defending Gateway Dirt Nationals winner. Max Blair also out there, the 111, last year's O'Reilly Auto Parts Rookie of the Year. The Centerline Motorsports entry, the 96V Tanner English. Tanner English in the Sean and Lisa Martin, Viper 
Risk management entry. There's the 20 RT. Ricky Thornton Jr. The Big River Steel Hoker Trucking Coltman Farms entry out of Martinsville, Indiana. Tied for the current points lead in the Lucas Oil Late Mud Dirt Series. There's Jonathan Davenport, the Nutridac Solutions AEC warranty entry for Lance and Darla Landers. Double O Motorsports. He is out of Batesville, Arkansas, the car owner. And of course, he's out of Blairsville, Georgia. Great shot there of Blair and English. Two former rookies of the year in the Lucas Oil Late Mud Dirt Series. Right now, here in Dirt Draft Hot Laps, it's Brandon Shepard. Now, Tim McCready at 15782. Of course, McCready and I, we had to talk about Josh Allen a while ago. And has there ever been a guy that's carried a team like Josh Allen does? Does he need some help? He's right. It's, it's got to be a bummer to be in the AFC, right? Allen's incredible. Lamar's incredible. Burrow's incredible. Guess what? You got to go through Mahomes. <laughs> you still got to go through the pro football Mahomes. focus, not even top 50 receivers. And, you know, I'm just, I don't know. Jack Riggs. Uh, now Tanner English. Yeah, good, good lap for Tanner Riggs English, 15-0-2-1. Yes, Ben Shelton. I was going to say a note from that set. I talked to Ricky Thornton Jr., and, and Michael talked about up there about Bubba Clem. They reshaped the racetrack. They added banking, especially down in three and four. And Ricky said you could really get up there and run the top in three and four. He said the key is going to be, though, if you follow somebody in there, the way the air is on these race cars, he doesn't know if you can stick it up there. But I just watched Ricky Thornton Jr. run as high in three and four intentionally as any driver I've ever seen here at Ocala Speedway. That's something to watch. And also in the 81F out on the racetrack, Jaden Frame. He's in yep. Jason Riggs, number 81. They're trying to shake down a few things on that race car, and you could be seeing obviously here tonight, tomorrow night, and then said maybe the first night or two over at East Bay as well for Jaden Frame, a five-time winner last year. Yeah, out of Decker, Tennessee. They talk about this track, Ben, and we talked about it having a crown like in the middle and shelf on top. Well, they've tried to eliminate that, and like I said, uh, they did some work, what, back uh, December, maybe January on this track. Yeah, and uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, Mike, no, we got Mike loose wheel on the front in the stretch. pit area, you better hide because I don't know that you tighten Bob Gardner's left rear tire as it's rolling down the front straightaway. And that's not how Bob wanted to start the night, but to your point, Michael, he told me as well, they've got some things working, potential marketing partners might allow him to run a schedule he's always dreamed of, but he is going to need all four tires on that 4G to make <laughs> it all happen. I can't think about seeing a tire on a racetrack like that and not think about, and I bet Ben will get this Bristol. reference. Bristol. Ben got it. He knew. <laughs> ben, this is Ben and I have share a, share a brain. The first Bristol on dirt, when that thing shot all the way around through turns one and two, an official, one of the Hava Tampa officials, tried to stop it on the yeah, back right, stretch. It did not right. work well. It had so much, <laughs> so much momentum. And I think we've got a shot of this one falling off Bob Gardner's car. Long story short, the Bristol tire cleaned the guy out <laughs> on the yeah, four wheeler. It, it launched him. And you could, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, it's funny we both went there. But Gardner's going to go off on the hook. And, and James, I tell you what, you know, again, you talked about looking around the pit area. I talked to Tanner English. He did not have the best of luck over at Golden Isles. Heavy contact in that heat race the other night. He said they, it, it, the rear clip is bent just a small amount. They don't think it's enough to matter. But if I understand right, he hit the wall so hard it knocked the motor loose yeah, from the did, motor yep. mountains. Yep. And so he said last night, though, the car felt really yep. good. And one other note, Dalton Wilson, he said that this is the best his car's ever felt here. And let's not forget, he was a heat race winner here last year. Maybe Dalton Wilson gets his first Lucas Oil win here tonight. And Tanner has his father-in-law, Rodney Melvin, multi-time UMP national champion, Michael. And now, of course, his dad, Terry, will be down next week for East Bay to help. As, as they lift up Bob Gardner's car. I hopefully think, no damage, I, I, I think, I Hopefully, I think it looked pretty clean. I think we've got the replay. Bob does not want us to show this replay, but we've got it right about there. They're not under speed, so. <laughs> the car looks fine, right? I, I don't think easy easy for me to say. Easy for, for you to say, Easy right? for me to say. Uh, Tilly's got to clean it up down there, but there she goes rolling down the front stretch, James. Get that back on and back out here. As we again, we are in group two of Dirt Draft Hot Laps. Go to dirtdraft.com. Be sure to sign up. For those that have never played, you get $100,000 play money. you got to pick before the heat races tonight, your top five. You've got a salary cap to work with. You've got to fit it under that. And we'll see what happens here later on tonight if you will be a winner. And you can also get a shirt, right? Free T-shirt for new subscribers, I believe. Yes. Uh, quickly, I got a text message from Miles Moose also. He says, tires rolling across the racetrack gives him PTSD. He had a real bad tire fall off earlier this year at a very big racer last year. Yeah, so, so yeah, yeah. Miles, Miles feels the pain as well. Yeah, there's several of them that that's happened to. 
Yeah, I think that was the Prairie Dirt Classic and the, That's heart, right. the heartbreak caution on the last lap cost him a shot in one of those shootout wins. Um, so, yeah, Bob Gardner's going to head back to the pit area and they're rolling this racetrack. And I tell you what, guys, at least I don't know from up there, from down here, this racetrack looks really good tonight. Bubba did tell me as well, it's no big secret that this racetrack has eaten tires in the past. Now, he did claim, now you got the Bubba Clem factor, but he did claim to me that guys were pretty much on the same tires all last night, that this new surface is not near as abrasive as what we saw in the past. Yeah, I've always kind of liked it. I mean, it's kind of neat. And, uh, you know, you go from a big track at Golden Isles like to here, and it's like like Corey Lawler said, you're going from Daytona to Brownstown. <laughs> kind of, you know, just using it as an that, analogy. That but, might be a slight exaggeration. Well, but I, 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 you could have said Macon. Uh, that but is it's, true. it's bigger than Macon. But. That, that is true. You know, obviously, Ocala in the future, we, we all know East Bay is going away. I think Ocala would love to host more mm -hmm. Winter Nationals races. We'll kind of see what happens in the future. But uh, I'll give Bubba and Tom Bean credit. They're putting time and energy and effort into this place. Like I said, new logo. I love the new logo. I think I think Dylan Braddy and Jacob mm -hmm. Nord mm -hmm. collaborated on that logo. It, lo logo. it looks fantastic. Uh, they're, they're putting in some time, energy, and effort here, without question. Will the drive home have a logo tonight? Will you have a logo? No, you Ben's mad at me that I have a spo an organic sponsor. He's already mad at me because Jeff Hoker and the Nippy yeah. 50 is the or very organic sponsor, I, and he's already yeah, mad at me, yeah, James. I love Jeff Hoker. I love the Nippy 50, but Rigsby sold us out. We were never going to have a sponsor uh, on it, and here we are in 2024. I, <laughs> I can't wait to see the shirts on that race. The, the worst part oh, is I've already seen for, ben, <laughs> for Ben, he he came as part of the package. He has to go announce for Jeff that weekend. I am so. going to go announce it. Jess, if Jeff, if you could enclose that press box in the infield, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Again, fans watching at home, you can uh, make it out, come out to the track. All Tech this weekend on Friday and Saturday night. And then Sunday practice at East Bay and six nights to clay by the Bay. Tickets still available. Come on down. The final winter nationals for the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series ever. And again, we'll be back in October for the grand finale as we pick them up here in group number two of Dirt Draft Hot Laps. When you watch these guys in Hot Laps here, James, and you can see this this shot right here when they pitch the car into three. Yeah. It, it's Bubba and a lot of the drivers will tell you your entire night at Ocala is going to be made by how you enter turn three. One and two are relatively easy turn to navigate. Turns three and four. If you don't hit three right, you miss four, as, as Mr. Lawler just did right there. And when that happens, your entire lap and night can be dictated about your entrance into that corner. How about that finish a couple of years ago with Devin Moran when he was in the tie touring nine and McCready crashing across the finish line? Remember that? It's I like, do. whoa. That's a guy that needs a good run. It's Tim McCready here tonight at the Bubba's. Again, your best the series championship points when we leave here and go to Atomic and Brownstown coming in after, in March. That's Spanish moss, James. My guys tease uh. me all the time. You see the Spanish <laughs> moss over the in turns one and two okay. over the trees there. Uh, there is nothing that makes me feel more romantic about racing in the south than these trees with that gorgeous Spanish moss hanging down. I love it. And my Ben and, and Tim and our entire content team, D-Swab, they tease me relentlessly about it. It's it We don't get this in the Midwest. I love it. Well, we don't have it in Memphis either, but you brought it up the past 14 years that <laughs> I've come down here with you every time. So. I thought strawberry shortcake made you. They, I, I can be romantic about both things. I can be romantic about both things. <laughs> What do they say? Is there nothing more romantic than baseball? There's nothing more romantic than Spanish moss for me. So <laughs> I can tell in turns one and two, though, you see where Dalton Wilson Absolutely. is right there. Absolutely. It is a, it's a half lane to a lane up for sure. You know, I, I don't know that they're not going to be throwing sparks off the wall in turns one and two tonight, but I think the entrance point into that corner is definitely higher. Well, they may. They may. I saw Tim Fuller throw sparks off that wall one time at a World of Outlaws show here. He got upside down in one and two, but yeah, you can tell, especially from the infield, they've gone, they've reshaped it. And actually, my favorite part of this racetrack is the dog leg on the back straightaway, because when those guys get about to that automotive racing products, that ARP banner, it's like they hit the turbo button right there, and they just haul butt off into turns three and four, and then they got to pinch it down to try to get through there. It's I've had many a driver say, if you're good in one and two here, your car is not going to be very good in three and four and vice versa, and it makes it a driver's racetrack. I mean, the, the possibilities for a couple of new winners may exist here the next couple of nights, so we'll just have to wait and see as we go back green here in Dirt Draft Hot Laps with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Glad each and every one of you are tuned in tonight. It's only 20 after 6. It just seems like it's... 
those Riggs race cars, it's, we had shown one there. Those are good-looking race cars. There are a yeah, lot of good-looking race cars on the racetrack absolutely. right now. JD's 49 is beautiful, and obviously Ricky's 20 RT. The 1-1-1 of Max Blair. The 1-1-1. Player. Well, Tanner English, 14, and now Ricky Thornton Jr. at 14, 3, 4, 7. In the SSI Motorsports 20 RT, Tanner English, Dalton Wilson, Brandon Shepard, Tim McCready. And now Davenport will go to second at 14.479. Who says hot laps doesn't pay Michael Rigsby? It does in the Lucas Oil Lane on the Dirt Series. They'll get a cash award. I believe last year it was Jonathan Davenport that was the uh, top hot lap driver. And uh, I know on the opening night at Golden Isles, it was Jimmy Owens, Ricky Thorne, 14.347 right now. 14.347 in that Hoker Trucking, Big River Steel, Coltman Farms. 20 RT. Speaking of him, I mentioned it in the pre-race show. It is kind of wild. This this kid from Arizona, by way of Iowa, by way of Kansas, by way of yeah. by way of Indiana. How many racetracks that guy's been to in his life? And I asked right. him today. He goes, "That's my favorite. This is my favorite racetrack." He just said, "It's just so wildly unique here that it just make it endears it to him, and he loves it." It's again that guy's. How many racetracks has Ricky been to? Maybe right. not as many as Dustin Jarrett, but no. but a, but a good bit. Oh, and then you got another Thornton coming in here. This Dylan Thornton from California going to be running the Midwest next year. A lot of uh, MLRA races and such. So his first full year in a super late model. A lot of guys moving up. Of course, uh, Ben, you know, Braden Berry. Braden Berry, the West Portsmouth, Ohio, modified hot shoe young man. He's got him as open late model that he'll be debuting here in about a month in March. Yeah, we talked about Derek Groomer. He got one of those yep. BMF race cards. And Cody Mahoney's coming back yep. in uh, in Indiana and there's several other drivers. Now, that's one thing I want yep. to touch on real quick. We talked about all the money these guys are winning, and all we hear, and yes, can things always be better? Is this sport expensive? Yes, but at least two team owners have told me They've got more sponsorship this year than they've ever had. One even told me almost double what they've ever had. So there are new sponsors coming into this sport, and hopefully that's a trend that continues. Yeah, absolutely. The 157 car, Mike Marler, planning to run the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series here this year, and Greg Bruning's Skyline Motorsports 157. Three-time winner of the Lucas Oil Knoxville Late Model Nationals. There's a 75 car. Go ahead and say it. Fastest 75 since John Gill. <laughs> More specifically, Art. the fastest black and green 75 since John Gill. Oh, man. Do a quick John Gill sponsors. Rattle them off real quick. Jack's Lounge, you can get them off. <laughs> Jack's Lounge, Edwards Heating and Cooling 75, <laughs> Terry Eaglin. But, yeah, I mean, there's a. I talked to Stan Hoover Jr. a few months ago, and they're still working on a car for John. They may bring it out here in a month or so, so we'll have to wait and see. They're going to do a little bit of practice, but... The modern day cowboy, could it be? It would. Be, well, we've been it, we've been looking at that for a couple of years, and it, let's it, see. How old is John now? Uh, I'm not going to say. Now he's. <laughs> I don't think he'll mind. Well, Billy Moyer, 66. I think John is. 64. And Billy Moyer just won two races out yeah, in Arizona. Casa Grande, still getting it done. Billy Moyer, the all-time winningest driver in the Speed Weeks, you know, over the years, simply amazing. He's got like 32 more wins than Scott Bloomquist, who's second all-time in the Speed Weeks list. I know a website, by the way. Yeah. If you want to want to look at that, at least two guys. I think just two out on the racetrack right now. James, who are out at that, um, you know, Rio Grande Way Services Wild West Shootout with Mike Marlin and Drake Troutman. I think Mikey went out there expecting to win a race and did not. Mm -hmm. Drake went out there expecting to run a little better than he did, and he did not. I talked to both of them about it. They said, great experience. Got a lot of laps. They kind of consider the Wild West shootout spring training, and I, I expect a better speed weeks from Mikey than maybe he had out west. But again, I think everyone thought that 157 was going to win a race, and he was not unable to out west. And, of course, Chris Bragg Motorsports, he on the car for Drake Trapman after, but Drake in his own DTR equipment, hopefully making a run for the O'Reilly Auto Parts rookie of the year, the 25. Also making a run for the O'Reilly Auto Parts top rookie of the series. That is Tony Jackson Jr. in car 25. There's the eight, Dylan McCowan, last year's Lucas Oil MLRA rookie of the year. As we are in this group, Kyle Bronson, the 40B, right now Mike Marler, 14605. As we are in group three hot laps, Ross Robinson also out there in the seven out of Georgetown, Delaware. Logan Hint, driver out of Buckhannon, West Virginia. Hudson O'Neill, the Valvoline, uh, rocket number one, 14468. And right there is going to be Hudson O'Neill, 14468. Drake Troutman, 14567. Mike Marler, 14605. Kyle Bronson at 14653. 
Think Dr about Drake Troutman. I'm, what is he, 18, if he runs for this Rookie of the Year, which I think he'd have a great shot at winning this Rookie of the Year. Maybe a few more sponsorships coming. You never know. I mean, Flo gives us a great platform to get more sponsorship out there. Just think if he didn't have the flat tires he had last year. I know. How many, how many wins, Ben, how many wins did Troutman have last year? 21? Yeah, yeah. In 20, modified 20, and late uh, model? 21 combined. He won the, the Gateway Dirt Nationals in the mod. That was 21. Six of those were a late model. And, of course, the former, former Ultimate Northeast Late Model Series champion, that kid's a will man. And, I mean, he put on some shows on the Summer Nationals. And I would argue to say, man, maybe four to five more wins last year if the tires could have stayed with him. I know the tire management's part of it. But he's a talent. And what he has accomplished in the mods and the late models, I think the sky's the limit for that kid. Did he not tell me, and he might have told you, the reason for those there was something about water in the when they were airing them up there somehow got water in there yeah, is I, that I, I, possible? Don't I talked to him at port royal last yeah. year and there was something they figured out after it bit them several times and it was something to do with that but you know hopefully they learn from that and yeah he's out here and that kid that kid's really talented and there's just a lot of up and coming young talent yep. right now we saw dylan mccowan out there out of urbana missouri i think he has just got a world of possibilities he's just got to get some seat time and down the middle of the back straightaway i know michael you and i always stop at a lot of fast food restaurants on the road i love a sonic theme <laughs> number <laughs> eight late model just looks good it looks good i'm not gonna lie ben ben gets at least one sonic blast uh, a day while the, on well, the road and day. that's why he's working out all the time these photos because he eats a sonic blast every day james that's There's why like he's lifting and running and everything arkansas alone <laughs> it is i always used to joke my wife and i amber my, my beautiful wife there has got to be more sonics per capita in batesville arkansas than in, in any place and in the some planet ways. and so i ways. was at the topless guys a couple of years ago and i'm down there to sonic and a couple of other staff members and we were ordering you know we're stand up and order and, and the guy comes up behind us and blows his horn as loud as he could. Jared Landers. <laughs> it was Jared Landers, and it's like scared the fire out of him. On the backstretch right now, the 66C of Matt Cosner. I featured him in the Speed Weeks Minute today. I walked up and I said, how you feeling, Cosner? He goes, it's day five, and it feels like day 55. He said, I said, oh, no, <laughs> it's way too early, 66, to have that feeling. But I think Ben and I touched on this. You have those last year, remember, we went gold miles, gold miles, gold miles, yeah. Ocala, Ocala, no yeah. break, right, yeah. five in a row. Yeah. This year we had the Sunday and Monday off a little early for the break, I thought, you know, and yeah. I think Matt said we sat around for a few days and we're itching to get back racing. Uh, right. he, he's, he's got the dog days of speed weeks way too early, though. You saw Jimmy Owens there. He's been fast the first two nights, uh, a top 10 on uh, Thursday night. Of course, we had the rain out on Friday. He had a good run going on Saturday night. They, they've got the speed early. They yep. just have to find it later on in the night, Mike. One thing I told Ben Shelton, too, and I'll say it quickly, when Jimmy o Jimmy Owens is never fake fast. When he's fast in February, he's going to be fast in November. So that 20 is about to have a hell of a year, I think. Yeah, no doubt about it. 80 career wins in the Lucas Oil Late Model Disc Series, four-time series champion. Along with Earl Pearson, Jr., you have two three-time series champions, Jonathan Davenport and Scott Bloomquist as well. As we are underway in this next group of hot laps, Dirt Draft Hot Laps, Ethan Dotson also out there in the 174 out of Bakersfield, California in the Coleman Farms entry, Kylan Garner now hailing out of Neosho, Missouri. Dennis Herb Jr., he'll be our final qualifier of the night, the 28 car. Devin Moran, the Big River Steel Double Down Motorsports entry. Cody Overton in the Dave Stein TriStar Promotions entry. Jimmy Owens, 14-424. Ethan Dotson, 14. Now Devin Moran. 14-0-4-4. And we have three guys under 14 seconds here last night in the practice session. And, Michael, we've got the fastest of them all so far here in this final group. Carson Brown also out there in the 28B. But, Michael, Devin Moran, 14-0-4-4. And 99 started uh, speed weeks off there, obviously strong at, at Volusia and he, he's Devin to me, obviously, each of the last few. Listen, I'm a, I'm a Chicago Bears fan. We like to tell ourselves Justin Fields taking a step every year. I think Devin Moran, similar thing, right? Taking a step a little bit every year. And listen, he was close to taking the championship step last year yeah, at Eldora. Absolutely. The way things were shaken down at the Dirt Track World Championship but, on the final lap. But the, but, he, but the last couple of months of the year, he was solid. He had a yeah. lot of podiums, a lot of top five finishes. I mean, it was. It was not a, uh, you know, he didn't back his way into nothing. I mean, he did a great job there the last couple of months. And right now, 14 0 4 for last year's Show Me 100 winner. So that'll do it the fastest in the Dirt Draft Hot Laps. 
for the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series in that group. Tyler Herb, talk about him. He had a top 10 the other night. Uh, Michael Tilly suffered a flat tire. Yeah, Turbo doing some soul searching this year. I think a little bit about his intentions as far as the year goes. I'd l love to see him obviously back out here with Lucas Oil. I still think that's a strong possibility. But like a lot of guys, let's get through Georgia. Let's get through Florida and see how things go for him. Uh, you know, he can't we wait to Lease Bay. Get, well, and more Moran. He, that's, you know, a DJ joked the other night about over under. It might have been Ben. Times you're going to cry at East Bay. That I think Devin Moran. Moran, it's be over under per day. That entire Moran family has a love affair with that racetrack in Gibson. And they're going to be bummed out next week. All right. All-star performance time trust coming up here shortly. You see the cars coming through pit lane over there. And again, Boom Briggs is going to be our first qualifier of the night. We'll get two laps back to back here in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. In ten, 10 bonus points, fastest in Group A, 10 in Group B. So, again, three-way tie for the points lead. Heck, in a hitting in a night here with – that's simply amazing. That 3S of Brian Shirley that it just – I think somebody – That is sharp. Yeah, that is just, sharp. I think Ben mentioned this, and it takes you back to the year he won Knoxville, right? Spins right. out, goes to the rear of the field, right. and comes through and wins it. And, of course, I'm an Illinois kid, so I have an affinity for that classic-looking 3S that he's got. But that is a good-looking race car. We might be at peak paint schemes right now. I don't know. Listen, 95, 96, 97, the Boggs B4, the Freddy Double Zero, the Moyer 21, the Bloomquist 18. That'll probably always be on top. But we got some – Really good looking race cars to start this year. You remember off. when we threw that stretch and everybody was had a white car. Yeah. That's and true. Then everybody had a black car. Black and green was yeah, big, black, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just it's just uh and all these uh, decal and you know, rap guys, they do just such a great job and you know. I challenged I think it was uh Ricky's team the other day, I said, I wanna see a die cut car for Eldora. Somebody to go the old school die cut individual big pop like the old bill fry 66 popping you know on there i, I would right. love to see somebody do that uh for a throwback at eldora this year james all right michael coming up next there we go boom briggs will be out first in the dave warren power sports excess storage trans 58 Briggs transport rocket clement shane winings the crew chief on the 99b out of bear lake pa the 93 out of hanover pa that'll be Corey lawler he's at the ponchos racing products dry dean Coppins auto clinic ppc lubricants company creek side of the sales all about reps his father poncho lawler crew chief on the rocket pro power and brian shirley the three is chad of illinois Devin Brennan, the crew chief of the Bob and Lisa Cullen Entry, Thomason Express, Hoker Trucking, Fox Shocks, All Gear Performance Products, J&J Ventures Gaming, KBC Graphics, Ricky Lemon Motorsports, Boom Briggs, 14761-14761. Corey Lawler, 15156. Brian Shirley, fast time. 14135. Good laugh. 14135 for Shirley. Back in the rocket tonight. Boom Briggs, 14452. Corey Lawler. And Corey will clock in at 14.998. And lap two for Shirley, just a tick slower at 14.193. So Brian Shirley, 14.135. Remember, Brian Shirley has never won a Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series sanctioned event, even though he won the Lucas Oil Knoxville Late Model Nationals back in the day. That was unsanctioned. Ryan Scott will be up next to the Zero R. He's out of Pittsfield, PA. Michael, one of your favorite sponsors, the Rusted Nuts Garage Zero. You, you like that? That's my, easily my favorite. Easily you your you favorite. Got on Macintosh, the Billy Hicks Double Nickel, H&H &H Shuttle Sales, Bill Stein Hicks Racing, and Earl Pearson Jr., the Jason Round, Lucas Oil Products, Tickler Body and Frame Wrecker and Crane, and Millard Family Chapels, Edsburger Trucking, Remy Realty, Sunoco, c &D Contractors, Developers, Bonding, and Cowboy Roy's Macintosh, second quick, 14-436, Ryan Scott, 15404 Pearson to go to second at 14357. Lap number two, Ryan Scott. It's quicker. It's sixth at 15064. McIntosh will go to second at 14283. And EPJ, fast time. 14031. 14031 for the four time Lucas Oil champion. 40 career wins. In Jason Rounds, 46. Michael, how about that? The BMF. It's early, but if that would manage to stay, we'd have to change it from, from a concept to an idea to a thought to a team <laughs> to a fast time already, the third race of the year. And it was probably 10 days ago, this team got together. <laughs> Clay Harris, he made the first two shows at Golden Isles. He's in the sixth out of Jupiter Florida. The Brian Green crew chief entry. Wilkerson Farms, Impact. Electrical Services Rescue, Metal Framing, VGR Speed Shop, 
Poor Boys Racing Supply, followed by the 17 double S out of Dade City, Florida. Brendan Smith, he's in Big Daddy's Cattle, Jim Pacino Trucking, Plum Crazy Plumbing, Guardian Hurricane Production, Skipper Smokehouse, Rocket Durham, and Garrett Albers of the 58, the Roberts Racing Entry. First lap time for Clay Air. Still goes second quick at 14055, 14055. Brendan Smith, 14893. Garrett Alberson, fast time, 14010. And now Clay Air is faster yet. 13988. 13988 for Clay Harris. Smith 14509. Alberson 13926. 13926. New fast time, Garrett Alberson. You could tell he had a hunger in his eye. I'm telling you, when we talked to him before the race today, he felt so good about how they ran at the Wild West shootout that that speed was going to carry over yes, again sir. early, early, right? But he's a, him just one of two drivers under the 14-second market right now, and I think if we can't play favorites. It'd be really cool to see Garrett Alverson get sure. a Lucas Oil win. Masia Valley Transportation, Bill Sportshop, Bill Stein. Uh, Danny Alberson, his wife, the crew chief, DunrightTV.com, Sunoco, Romer Machine and Welding, Lucas Oil, Capital Race Decals. Up next, should be the five out of Middleburg, Florida, the Magic Man, Mark Whitener, the 20 RT out of Martinsville, Indiana, Ricky Thornton Jr., and the 96V out of Ben, Kentucky, is Tanner English. Mark Whitener in the Southeast, Ship Repair, Baker Farms, Jet Concrete, Ocala Restaurant Supply, Mosley Ranch, Timber, Thornton, in the Big River Steel, Hoker Trucking, Coltman Farms, Dino One, Westside Tractor, Bill Stein, Sunoco, MD Raps. English in the Vite. Ricky Thorne Jr. fast time 13915 13915 Whitener 14346 English is third at 13982 Thornton 13915 was his first lap lap two 13883 it's even faster 13883 English and it's Tanner English 13881 that is fast time in group B oh baby <laughs> Sports in good hands, man, right? Oh, you man. Tanner English, Ricky Thornton, Garrett Alberson, Clay Harris, that first four young guys, all good. And by the uh, way, I'd never get to sit in the tower with you during qualifying, I think, yeah. in my career. It's like watching Picasso paint. I just want people at home to know. That's what it's like to watch qualifying with the greatest to ever do it. I, they got to experience it once in their life. <laughs> Two one-thousandths of a second, Michael Rigsby. 13881 for English in the base capital way Supreme Enterprises Viperist Management Creekside Auto Sales 96V. Can it get any better than this? It's Bob Gardner in the four in Washington, Illinois, the Fox Shocks Dynamic Driveline Hooker on his VP Performance Bodies, Jack Riggs, Nolensville, Tennessee, the Riggs Drilling Solution, Moses Motorsports, VP Fuels, Coltman Farms, and Brandon Shepard, the Hoist IV Level Hydration, Coltman Farms Team Real Tree. First lap time, Bob Gardner. It's going to be 14629. Jack Riggs, 14554. Brandon Shepard is going to be eighth at 14287. Lap two for Gardner is quicker. 14587. Lap two for Riggs. Jack Riggs will go to seventh at 14273. Shepard, he'll go to sixth quick time. Brandon Shepard, 14094. 14094. So through 15 cars, it's Tanner English. 2020 Lucas Oil Rookie of the Year, and it's Ricky Thorne Jr., Garrett Alberson, third quick time. We talked about those expanded sponsorships. You see Hoist on the hood of that yes, Brandon sir. Shepard car. Sheppy and, and that team of his with Justin Cook and Steve Arpin really starting to tap into those bigger corporate dollars, and you love to see that. And that's hopefully we can continue that this year, James, with more guys. All right, the next we've got five more to grow in group. A, which will be each one and two tonight. Tim McCready, the 39 two time champion out of Watertown, New York, at the Paylor Motorsports entry. Followed by the 111 last year's O'Reilly Auto Parts. Rookie of the Year, Max Blair out of Centerville, PE, the Center Lane Motorsports entry. And the 49 out of Blairsville, Georgia. Three time champion, John of the Davenport. In the Nutrient Solutions, not a go seat entry. McCready. He'll go to eighth at 14159. 14159. Make a plumbing of the Carolinas, Baker Mitchell Company. Armslist.com, Bill Stein, Brad Ben Trucking, Mark Four. Lap one for Davenport is fourth at 1392. Blair is 10th at 14174. McCready seventh right now here, 14065. Lap number two for Blair is 14147. Davenport lap two, and he'll go to third at 13904. 13904. Max Blair in the Creekside Auto Sale, CJ Derry, Murphy's Logging, Upstate Auto Group for Centerline Motorsports. Brad Spochaz. The car owner getting into super late model racing this year with last year's rookie of the year. So, Michael, through what do we got? 18 cars. It's English, Thornton, Davenport, Alberson. Clay Harris, 
a youngster in fifth. Can he hang on and, and, and start running in front of those heat races? Tanner English after the way gold miles ended for yeah. him would be huge for him to get a fast time tonight. Jane Frame on a Decker Tennessee's in the Riggs Motorsports entry. Riggs Drilling Solution, Moses Motorsports, VP Vules, Coleman Farms, Longhorn, Clements, Dalton, Wilson, the ETD, the James Ratliff entry. MGL of Sills, JR, a trucking the auto outlet, Kellner Contracting, Earnhardt Technologies, Grantley Farms, Innovative Community Solutions, BL Construction, New Point Lighting, and Worldwide Custom Car Haulers. Left one, Jane Frame is 14.679, the big perm at 14.065, that's seventh. And here comes Jane Frame filling in tonight for Jason Riggs. Jaden Frame, 14-5-2-0. Wilson, will he pick it up? He'll go to fifth quick time at 13-9-4-9. 1-3-9-4-9 for Dalton Wilson. That'll do it. It's like a night at East Bay, right? I mean, <laughs> how many times have we seen somebody come out late at East Bay and get fast time? But this first group, Dynamic and Tanner English, 13-8-8-1 in the Sean and Lisa Martin 96V. Right now, your fastest overall. Fastest overall, obviously, start on the pole that first heat race. Uh, Dalton Wilson, I think we've talked about in much in the lead up to Speed Weeks, as I have Ricky Thornton, Bobby Pierce, or Jonathan Davenport, because he ran so well last year. Everybody in the sports going, he's going to win one. He's going to win one down there. Off to a pretty good start, uh, that fifth place qualifying at 13 9 4 9. So Tanner will be on the pole of the first heat. If he wins that one, he'll be on the victory fuel pole tonight. Ricky Thornton Jr., second. He'll start inside row one of heat two. Outside row one will be Jonathan Davenport. Outside row number one in heat number two will be Garrett Alberson in 58. Two of those have never won a Lucas Oil race. Tanner English nor Garrett Alberson trying to set them up for a good starting spot in tonight's A main 40 laps, Michael. Again, like I said, the way Golden Isles finished for Tanner English, right? It, just that kind of devastation in turns one and two that he had. And Tanner's an emotional kid, right? He's I've followed him on the Summer Nationals a lot of years. You know what he's thinking. You don't have to guess. Uh, I probably need to visit him after that qualifying run. His spirit's a little higher, I would guess, tonight. All right, Group B coming up. These will be East 3 and 4 tonight. The 75 out of Wade, North Carolina, will be Dan and Adam. The 70 out of Inman, Pennsylvania, that'll be Drake Troutman. And the 19M out of Rain, Mississippi, in the JC and Motorsports Colt Miller entry. That is Spencer Hughes. Daniel Adam in the mobilization funding. Spiffy's Justin Langdon, electrical contractors, and Restore Warehouse. First lap time, Daniel Adam, 14.305. Drake Troutman. Open to run for the Raleigh Auto Parts Rookie of the Year, 14097, 14097. Lap one, Spencer used fast time, group beat, 14009, 14009. Adam, lap two, 14180. Troutman, he'll go to fast time, 13995. And Hughes, Spencer Hughes, 13964, 13964. That's quickest of those three. And the Yellow Hammer, Design and Construction, Clyburn Tank Lines, Boswell Oil, Neon Bubbles, Car Wash, Link Construction, Fox Shop, Steering Buddy, prof Professional Concrete Cutting and Drilling, 19M, Wormy Vaughn, the Crew Chief on 19M, right now quickest. That'll be Ross Robinson, the seven, a top 10 the other night at Golden Isles. He's in the Stokely Materials Commonwealth Company's number seven. Commonwealth Equipment Entry, followed by the two-star. First time here, Buckhannon, West Virginia for Logan Hit and the Jenkins Ford. Hit Enterprises, Rocket Vic Hill, and Mike Marler in the Skyline Motorsports Truck Country. You see about the tradition. Olsen Explosives Entry, Ross Robinson, 14-083. Logan Hit, 14-784. Mike Marler, fast time, Group B, 13-962. 13-962 for Mikey Marler. Lap number two. Ross Robinson is going to be 14.084, just one thousandth of a second slower. And lap number two, Mike Marler, it's faster. 13.913, 13.913, Logan hit second lap, 14.980. So Mike Marler, the Burning Rock Products, Petro Towing, Browns Heavy Equipment, Cannon Mall Savage, Josh Davis, Jerry Sprouse on that crew, Mikey Marler, Michael, 13.9. Anybody ever call you Mikey? Mikey Rigsby? <laughs> no, but we got Benji Shelton in the infield. Don't ever forget that, right? We have Benji Shelton. I heard in the you MP. say that, and I don't know why I say that. My apologies. <laughs> Kyle Bronson. There was a movie called Benji, wasn't it? Wasn't it about a dog? I think it was. That's, that's correct. That's, 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 that's correct. <laughs> We all love dogs. All right, Kyle Bronson, the 40B out of Brandon, Florida. Hudson O'Neill, the number one out of Martinsville, Indiana. Tony Jackson, Jr., the 25 out of Lebanon, Missouri. Bronson, the track record holder here at 
Ocala, 14-137 his first lap. Hudson O'Neill second at 13947. Tony Jackson Jr. 14465 at the Capitol. 25 house car. Lap two for Bronson. It's going to be 14196 as they are hammered down here tonight. O'Neill will stay second. Lap two, 13997. Tony Jackson Jr. 14351 14351 for the five time Mars, two time MLRA champion Tony Jackson Jr. in the Superior Power Custom Homes. Bill Stein, Elite Trailers, Daily Construction, Norris Logging, Springfield Raceway, Merrill Bonding. 25, Kyle Bronson, the race car engineering, Borsha's equipment, Michael Lloyd hauling and demolition, Tillman Roofing, LTX Home Builders, Lucas Oil, Bradco Equipment, and Mullinex Recycling, Ed O'Neill in the Valvoline, Sarpet Camper Engines, Performance Grading, Ace Metalworks, Styles Marine and Maintenance, Wheeler Meadows, O'Neill Savage Recycling, Professional Concrete, Cutting and Drilling, and Gunners Honey, Fox Shock, Sunoco, one. So Marler, 13 on one, three. Up next will be the 8 out of Urbana, Missouri. It'll be Dylan McCowan in the Sonic. Pomeroy Services number 8. It'll be the 76 out of Renner, South Dakota. He's at the Bargain Barn Tire Center. Grandpa Ben's Ranch. Blair No Door. And Cody Overton in the Dave Stein TriStar Promotions. Rocket out of Thompson, Georgia. No Door, 14067. Dylan McCowan at 14842. Lap 1 for Overton. As I mentioned, 14515. No Door. Blair Nodorf, lap two. It'll be fast time in group B, 13909. 13909 for the South Dakota resident. Cody Overton, he'll go to third here in group B, 13938. Dylan McCowan, 14657. Blair Nodorf, 13909. That is still not quickest overall, but it's quickest here in Group B. He's kind of become the forgotten Speed Weeks Iron Man too. The last several years, he goes typically all the way through Volusia 1.0 through Volusia 2.0 right. with right. all the Lucas races in between. I think there's about eight or nine guys doing every single Speed Weeks race. Blair's one of them and a hell of a start tonight. Fast time so far in Group B. So right now, Nodor from Marlow on the pole of heats three and four. Up next will be Matt Cosner at the 66 seat at originally West Virginia. The Nelson Edel says, all right, select mechanical contractors. We their fleet services, Mighty Oliver's. Global Truck Outfitters, Fox Factor, Jimmy Owens, the 20. In the Bobby and Jessica Kohler, Reese Bonnie McGann, Ultimate Towing and Recovery, Tim Short out of group, Cap Electric of Tennessee, Boom Test, Will Service, Redline, Goodrich Fluid, and Ethan Dobson in the Coleman Farms, 174 out of Bakersfield, California. Cosner. Matt Cosner, 14058. Owens, 14134. Dotson at 14494. Lap number two for Cosner is 14254. Jimmy Owens, seventh at 13999. Ethan Dotson, first time here, 14396. That's 13. 14396 in the special needs schools of Gwinnett, Coltman, Fires, Bill Stein, Autism Awareness, Dwayne Frady, the crew chief on the 174. So at 76, Blair Nodorf, Mike Marler, Cody Overton, Hudson O'Neill, your top four here in Group B. Impossible task for you to know immediately. Has Blair Nodorf ever had a fast time in a group in Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series no. history? I would no. say no. And I I'm not. No. I, I'm not sure even about Tanner English. We may have two because he was the 2020 Series Rookie of the Year. USA 120. It'll be Kylan Gardner. He's out of Neosho, Missouri. He's in the Double Down Asphalt Stack Products car, followed by the number one at a wave of the Texas, the best performance. Base Fuels, Robert Speed Company, First Class Septic, Bulk Material Lift, Anthony's Pizza, Santa Weld. For Eric and Kelly, Brock and Devin Moran in the Lazy Days RVC, they'll be trucking Big River Steel 99. Kylan Garner, 14918. Tyler Err, 14296. Moran. Devin ran 12th at 14207. 14207. Garner, 14585. Herb will go to third. Tyler Herb, 13936. Moran's got to pick it up. He goes to 10th at 14.059, 14.059 for Devin Moran. So two more left to qualify. It's Blair Nodorth, Mike Marler, Tyler Herb, now third, Cody Overton, fourth. Hudson O'Neill, Spencer Hughes, your top six, Michael. That is, uh, in honor of him not being here tonight, I'm going to use the word he uses all the time, an eclectic top five to say yeah, the absolutely. least. Absolutely, we no got to do that. Overton and Turbo. Uh, I love that grouping, the first five guys. A pair of 28s. How about that? Yeah. 
And I'm not talking Jimmy or Sam Mars, but I'm talking Carson <laughs> Brown and Dennis or Kevin Claycomb. Kevin Clevinson's Indiana. Kevin Clay Indiana, Vincent's Indiana. <laughs> Carson Brown. He's out of New London, North Carolina. In the Pay Cafe, Sunoco, Maximum Oils, Bill Stein, 28B, Wyatt Hardis and the crew chief. Heather Line, the crew chief on the 28. McBride, Mac, Bomac Truck Sales, Fox Shocks, Idea Red Mix, Kaiser Manufacturing. Brown, 14569. Dennis Herb Jr. It's going to be 12th right now in Groovy. 14109. They will pick it up. Here comes the youngster, the young teenager, Carson Brown from the Dalton Marler Equipment uh, School. And Brown, 14411. Dennis Herb Jr., 14076. 14076. That'll do it for Group B. Those over heats three and four tonight. 10th, Devin Moran, 9th, Matt Cosner, 8th, Jimmy Owen, 7th, Drake Troutman, 6th, Spencer Hughes, 5th, Hudson O'Neill, 4th, Cody Overton, 3rd, Tyler Urban, Mike Marler, 2nd, and your fastest in Group B, fastest ever in a group for the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, 13.909 at Arinder, South Dakota. How about it for Blair Nodorf, but the fastest overall at 13.881, the 2020 Lucas Oil Rookie of the Year, out of Benton, Kentucky. How about it for Tanner English? Our very own Ben Shelton has said many times, you, you, this place promotes, can can promote first-time winners. Tanner English and yep. Blair Nodorf on the pole of these, of two of these four heat right. races could leading be leading exactly to that. So that means Nodorf is on the pole of the third heat. That's right. Marler pole of the fourth heat. Tyler Herb outside row three. The winner of that race is going to start on the outside of the front row of the main event. Cody Overton outside row two of heat two. And... Ben, you and I talked about it, Michael. I just get a – maybe we'll have two first-time winners here in the next two nights with yet to be main scene. But Tanner English, after a rough go at Golden Isles the other night, comes back with vengeance here tonight. Well, you would love to see a first-time winner here. Now, with all of that said, this place can be harsh on guys trying to be a first-time winner. Veterans seem to reign supreme. We talked about Jonathan Davenport, three wins. Ricky Thornton Jr. with two. And then four other guys with a single win. Tanner English last year, guys, was an all-star performance fast qualifier at East Bay during the VLAN Winter Nationals. Tonight, he is going to do it again in the Sean and Lisa Martin Viperist Management 96V ra base racing fuels entry as he climbs out. Race fans, tonight's all-star performance fast qualifier out of Benton, Kentucky, Tanner English. Well, Tanner, you and I were talking in the pit area earlier, and you said, you know, it knocked the motor mounts loose when you got in the wall at Golden Isles and maybe bent the rear end a little bit. Maybe you got this BMF exactly the way you want it, though, after you tweaked it with the concrete a little bit. Yeah, I think so. You know, we we uh, hit the wall pretty hard there. I, I was afraid it messed some stuff up. But, uh, you know, we thrashed on it and uh, got it got it good. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not one to poke my chest out much, but uh, I, I just can't. People don't know, you know, I mean, it's my father-in-law and one of my buddies from home and me out here and uh, we get knocked around like that. It pisses you off and it puts a chip on your shoulder. So uh, we're out here in a car that nobody's got and uh, a motor that not many people's got. And, uh, you know, we're racing against guys with $10,000 a week payroll. So, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty cool to come out here and do this and uh, just just uh, hopefully we can cap it off and run good. Race fans, tonight's all-star performance fast qualifier, Tanner English. And guys, again, getting set for these heat races here tonight. In three races, James, we've had three different all-star performance fast qualifiers. Race one, it was Hudson O'Neill getting it done. Race, race two was Garrett Smith. And tonight, Tanner English, as we get set to see what's going to come out next, we'll throw it back up top to the press box. All right, Ben, thank you very much. Yeah, Tanner English. His father-in-law, Rodney Melvin, of course, multi-time UMP late model national champion here. Uh, you know, Mallory's dad. <laughs> Mallory's dad. So I dad. think the Thunderstocks will be coming up here in a little bit. So coming up, we'll have four Lucas Oil late model dirt series heat races as they do a little wall scraping here at Ocala Speedway in Ocala, Florida. On this Tuesday night, you're watching the Lucas Oil late model dirt series here on MAV TV on Flow Racing. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the Lucas Oil Late Monitor Series here on MAV TV on Flow Racing from Ocala Speedway in Ocala, Florida. Winter Nationals night number one here. We'll be back here tomorrow night. We'll be off on Thursday night. Practice at All Tech. The Thunderstocks. Michael Rigsby. Don't call him forward. What do, do not not front wheel drive, not forward. <laughs> V8 Thunderstocks. Oh, well, the good news is that, that we have Candace in the tower with us who knows more about Thunderstocks than you might know about dirt late model racing, and that is not easy to do. That is not easy to well, do. Well, she can come over. You, yeah, you, I'm trying to get her on the microphone right now to help us out. Well, we've got the 69A Jonathan Appleby. Applebee's? Right? Applebee. Jonathan Appleby. The neighborhood bar of grill? California. Yes. <laughs> The 12J will be Bubba Durbin. You know him. He's out of Ocala, Florida. Jason Gamble, he's out of Ocala. He's in 21. Defending champion Jason Gamble. Is that correct? Doug the Stassi, champion. The, 80, the SOS. Picayune. Is it Picayune, Mississippi? Uh, I, yeah, that sounds right. Rich Pratt in the number nine. He's out of Anthony, Florida. Philip Rook, he's out of Inverness, Florida, the 97. Justin Scarberry, the 24 out of Riverview, Florida. Quinn Steedley, I like that name. High Springs, Florida, the 11S. And here we go, Michael. Jimbo Warden in the number five, Olacala, Florida. I love Quentin Steedley. He very due diligence on the My Race Pass app has uploaded his photo on there as opposed to all the under Thunderstock drivers. I think Jim- I'm a Quentin Steedley guy tonight, the 11S. Jimbo Warden, the fifth rate is tight end going to Florida <laughs> State on the PFF rating, according to Chris. Yeah, I got to tell you, James. I'll tell, just- tell you what. He's got short arms, but he has a tough time pass blocking. We'll see if we got live timing here. We did, you know. We don't have live timing. When I was, we'll just uh, make it up. had to, we had to leave the facility earlier to drive down the road to upload something because the crowd is actually pretty good here tonight. So the cell phone service didn't work, and I saw a Thunderstock driver when I was walking out. I will tell you, I'm not going to tell you I know which one it is, but I will tell you they were pumped to get for them to get a run with Lucas Oil tonight. These guys love this, right? Uh, the the flow. The national flow audience, um, the, the, this is exciting for them, too, tonight. Usually, let's be honest, sometimes I bet you tonight, James, this race is good. I bet you these guys put on a good show tonight. I, I will almost guarantee it. Well, sure they are. They've got hey, you and I announcing. Have you ever, here. He, at some point it's in your Brownstown, huh? Brownstown career, did you ever race the street stock or anything like that back no, in the day? No, I never raced anything. No. Really? Is that right? I was in a spectator one night at Lincoln, a spectator race at Lincoln Park Speedway in Putnamville in a 77 Monte Carlo and got my doors blown off. <laughs> Who's your favorite number nine? Mike Jewell? Billy Drake. Curtis Roberts, Billy Drake. Of okay. course, the right. creative kitchens and baths, pink and black number nine. I love Billy. Still a good friend. Did my cabinets in my house. How about that? <laughs> you didn't have that on your bingo card, did you? Him and, him and his dad are the best. Right oh, there. yeah, Steve's fantastic. There's 24. That is not Rick Eckert. He is here tonight, though. Ryan Unzicker. Yeah. Him and I played player. high school sports against each other. Ryan and I, same you class. Did? We did. Ridgeview, uh, Ridgeview and El Paso. We played an all-star basketball game together, actually. Where were you ranked on the mock NFL Ryan draft? Ryan was ahead right? of me in the PFF list. He was. He, he certainly was. But, again, we apologize. No times for these. So, if there's a track record, I apologize <laughs> for not mentioning it. <laughs> But I, think, I like it. I think Ben did a charity go-kart race. I might have that wrong, but I think he did that one night as well. I don't remember when or where, but I think that may have had. By the way, that's a good – that 11 car, that's a good-looking race car right there. Now I lost my driver's list. <laughs> my apologies. Jimbo Horton, I believe, was Jimbo Warden, right? Jimbo Warden. Yes. yes. Jimbo Horton, that's right. He sounds like he would play at Florida State. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Jimbo Fisher, yeah, gone Jimbo, now. Gone, Jimbo gone, Fisher. gone now. Jimbo Fisher no longer, I don't no, not no longer with you. us. He's still living. He just <laughs> is it's no longer in Texas A&M either. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, we need to move. Got some vehicles need to be moved. Go ahead, Michael. Do you have any license? Out of the door, we've got license plates and descriptions. What do we have here? We've got an actual photo. Public service announcement. Two cars parked in handicapped parking. One looks like a a white, uh, what kind of truck is that? Is that a Dodge? White Dodge. Florida plate NNZ U90. You're parked in a handicapped spot and you need to move. And the other is a, what kind of car is this? A Rio. A Rio with Tennessee license plate. Three six seven four zero. 
so I'm I'm sad that Dustin Jarrett's sick tonight. I am, but I am. It is doing my heart good. You're doing. We need vehicles moved, Rigsby. That's the but, but best. I, I How bol- many people know their license plate number? No, I, I seriously, nobody does. I'm multi-dimensional, Ben. I'm sad that you don't think I can pull this off. So again, we have a white Dodge <laughs> NNZ U90. Got to move. We have a Rio uh, that is parked incorrectly. Right, the way they are parked. Right in the driveway, as a matter of fact, I'm being told. I like to add the color commentary on the level of parking in the handicap spot. 36740, Tennessee license plate. Hey, Rigsby, make me a believer during the call of this Thunderstock feature, and then we'll circle back. Right. James, send us to break. So you? unofficially, Jimbo <laughs> Warden is the fastest. In the, we, we have no clue who was fastest. Well, coming up next, we're going to have our pre-race ceremonies, our invocation, and national anthem. We're having fun so far tonight. Going to be a great night of racing at Ocala Speedway, Ocala, Florida. You're watching the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series here on BAP TV on Flow Racing. We'll be right back with our pre-race. ARP manufactures the ultimate fasteners from the best raw materials using Cold Forge technology. Family owned and made in the USA. Quality always comes first. For whatever extreme category you're in, it's always ARP-Bolts.com. New 2023 F-150s add up to 13 grand off, you bet, during Brandon Ford's ultimate 2023 model year closeout. Hundreds of F-150s add up to 13,000 off. Get special APR like 1.9% for 72 months. Super sale volume pricing is back, baby. 90 full-size Broncos reduced to as little as 45 dollars New 2023 Edges with 0% for 60 months. We're doing whatever it takes during the ultimate 2023 model year closeout at Brandon Ford and BrandonFord.com. Here at Tuners, Inc., we see cars come in with 80 horsepower all the way up to 1,500 horsepower. The goal of almost every customer in here is to pick up performance in a vehicle. They want to gain horsepower. They want to gain torque. What we have found with the E3 spark plug is the quality of the plug and the way it's built. E3s are a performance plug that's going to last longer. E3 Diamond Fire technology maximizes the fuel burn for more power and better fuel efficiency. E3 spark plugs. What are you running? ARP, the ultimate fasteners for racing in the dirt. With high horsepower demands, ARP delivers maximum clamping force and performance. When failure on the dirt is not an option, it's ARP-Bolt.com. Passionate about a life in racing? Surf track, drag racing, drifting, or monster jam? Find it all at the University of Northwestern Ohio. How do I become a mechanic? How do I become a driver? How do I drive monster trucks? And here at UNOH, there's pathways for everything. The fact there's a school you can go to for racing is just a little bit insane, but it's very cool because it gives kids like me the opportunity to chase that dream. See where your future can take you with a high-performance motorsports degree from the University of Northwestern Ohio. Welcome back to Ocala Speedway here in Ocala, Florida. The Lucas Oil Late Motor Dirt Series. James Essex, Michael Rigsby, Ben Shelton. Our pre-race getting ready to get started, if you will, before our four heat races tonight for the Lucas Oil Late Motor Dirt Series. Everybody, please rise, remove your hats. Jason Morgan from Dirt Racing Outreach with our invocation here tonight. Thank you for standing. Before we pray, we want to have a moment of silence. We know three soldiers perished a couple days ago in the war there in Israel. So if you would, let's have a moment. Dear Lord, we come to you tonight thanking you and praising you for who you are and what you've done for us, for being our glorious Savior, soon coming King, being with that name that's above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come to you tonight again just grateful for the sun that you made to shine today, the stars in the sky tonight, health and strength to be here and have breath in us and bless all that's here tonight, all these fans that have come out, all that are watching at home on Flow Racing, Mav TV. Just thank you for the Dirt Racing family for letting us meet new friends today and make uh, new friends and be here with our uh, Lucas Oil folks. And we just pray tonight, dear God, that you would bless all the drivers, keep them safe, most importantly from harm, the drivers, the crews, people in the pits, everything, the fans going home, watch over them. Bless us. Watch over our first responders, again, the military and all it's our duty to pray for. Help those that are sick tonight, that they'll be able to recover, Ben and others. Just forgive us for our sins and shortcomings in Jesus' name. Amen. 
And please remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. East Bay next week? Of the course. Go- the GOAT, Rusty Shields, will be joining us next week. Every so. night? I don't know about every night. <laughs> oh, what was that? He's going to be there. <laughs> that was. I'm not sure what that was. Are we still on? <laughs> We are still on. I think it's Dustin from afar is uh, tinkering with my microphone setup up here. He doesn't like how well I called that um, thunderstock and parking situation earlier, and he's getting a little antsy that I might be, you know, crushing it up here, James. He loves that at Eldora when the, the sheriff's deputies come up, and they've got it. They've got the name of the they the, got the, blood, of the blood type of the, the owner of the right. vehicle. <laughs> All right, Michael, ready to go. Who's going to be on the Victory Fuel poll tonight? The winner of this race. It's Penske Shock Seat number one on, on the pole in the 96V out of Benton, Kentucky. It'll be Tanner English on the outside. It'll be the 49 out of Blairsville, Georgia. Jonathan Davenport. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> I was trying to help you with your scoring sc- you? scoring monitor. You no worries. Dalton, Dalton Wilson. Dalton Wilson, Wilson. Row 2 and uh, Earl Pearson Jr., the Florida native in Florida, could get a win tonight, James, Row 2. Brandon Shepard, the B5, New Berlin, Illinois, outside. Last year's O'Reilly on a Prince rookie of the year, Max Blair, the 111 out of Centerville, PA. D-Mac, Donald McIntosh in Row 4 in the 99B from Bear Lake, Pennsylvania. Boom Briggs in the fourth row. And your final row driving one of the Riggs cars tonight out of Decker, Tennessee. It'll be Jaden Freeman on the outside. It'll be Corey Lawler. He comes to us in the 93 out of Hanover, PA, as we're trying to get our timing and scoring. Hey. <laughs> What's a macro? Is that, that's I think accurate? that's what Dustin has right now. It's a potentially dangerous macro, I think, is why he's not able to join us. This start's going to be everything right here. You Tanner English, you want to start in the pole right. in a 40 lap or Ocala. If he can get a jump here, it's going to be big for him tonight. All right, at the Nutridac Solutions start zone here at the newly rebranded Ocala Speedway, Ocala, Florida, the Lucas Oil 8 Monitor Series. Off at turn four, we are underway. The winner starts on the pole of the 40 lap A main tonight. They frag race into turn one, English, Tanner English, and out of turn number two, Davenport will shoot down low into the egg shape to turn three, and Davenport's going to grab the lead. It has been fast and furious so far here tonight at Davenport will lead lap number one. English second. Dalton Wilson runs in third. Again, the top four advance out of this race. Penske shock seat number one. Jonathan Davenport off at turn number four. 72 career wins in Lucas Oil late on dirt series. Tied, three-way tie for the points lead with Thornton and Hudson on the alone with J.D. down the back straightaway. Shepard runs fifth and McIntosh off at turn four. Davenport. The lap halfway next time around. Three down, five to go of these eight lap heat races. Heat number two coming up next. It'll have Ricky Thornton Jr. and Garrett Alberson on the pole on the front row. Off a of turn four, halfway done with heat number one. It's still Davenport, English, Wilson, and Pearson. Earl Pearson Jr. Two BMFs in this race. The only two in the pit area. English runs second. Pearson runs fourth. Pearson pressure from Shepard. And that hoist number B5 as they come off a of turn four. Five down, three to go. You said this three-eighths mile avocado shape in the turn three. Jonathan Davenport, Nutrinac Solutions, AC warranty, 49, two to go. Tanner English, a solid second at 96 feet. Dalton Wilson, Earl Pearson Jr. down the back straight away. It's the Barron's performance, one lap to go here in Penske Shock, seat number one for Jonathan Davenport. Three-time Lucas Oil 8 Motor Dirt Series National Champion. As we double box it, Shepard and Pearson at final transfer spot. JD is going to take the lead coming off of turn two. He's going to lead it the rest of the way in this caution-free race. English is going to finish second. Third is going to be Wilson. Fourth at the line of the Earl Pearson Jr. James, that race came down to that first corner of that first lap. Tanner, you know with JD on top, you got to protect it, and he tried, but turn two just kind of sucked him up out of the groove a little bit. And Jonathan Davenport's won a few races for a reason. He got back by him on the bottom. I think Ben Shelton getting ready to have a word with JD. I'd love to know about that first corner of that first lap. Ben. No doubt about it. <laughs> the winner of Penske Shocks Heat won Jonathan Davenport, 74 career Lucas Oil Late Metal Dirt Series wins, a three-time series champion, seven wins a year ago. And one of those came the last time the Lucas Oil Late Metal Dirt Series was here at Bubba Raceway Park, now Ocala. JD, turn one and two was everything. How much did your experience of this racetrack pay off to get to the lead? Uh, just 
just knowing what to do when, I guess. Everybody knows, though. Just uh, I got turned enough to get under him before before the air got took away from my nose. So uh, we've been working real hard on this thing. Last night, we wasn't very good at all. But uh, my guys put their heads together and uh, come up with some new things. Uh, I got to thank uh, Shepard. You know, we talked last night, and he helped us with some things. So, uh, so far, so good. Race fans, he'll be on the Victory Fuel pole position here tonight. How about it for Jonathan Davenport out of Blairsville, Georgia? He wins Penske Shocks Heat 1. And again, the top four go to the UNO Heat Scales to make it official. Davenport English, Dalton Wilson, and Earl Pearson Jr. So wait till JD clears the track. And we'll be ready for Summon Racing Equipment Number 2. It'll be eight laps. Top four transfer on the pole. It'll be the 20 RT. That'll be Ricky Thornton Jr. He's out of Martinsville, Indiana. And on the outside, Garrett Alberson in the 58 out of Las Cruces, New Mexico, now living in Dubuque, Iowa, Michael. We said it earlier tonight. Clay Harris, one of those young and up-and-coming drivers in our sport. He's inside row two. A guy who's not young and up-and-coming but has won an awful lot of races and still damn good Tim McCready in the 39. Brian Shirley. He was fast in hot laps. He starts inside row three. The three S out of Chatham, Illinois. And on the outside will be Jack Riggs. He's out of Nolansville, Tennessee in the 81J. Row number four, all Sunshine State. The five of Mark Whitener from Middleburg, Florida. And the 17S of Brendan Smith, a Dade City, Florida driver. And your final row will be Bob Gardner. He's out of Washington, Illinois. The Pink Panther 4G. And Ryan Scott, the zero out of Pittsfield, PA. So four more come out of this race here in Group A. It's one and two. The winner of this race will start inside row two. You saw what happened with Tanner at the start of that last race, turn yep. one. Something tells me that Ricky Thornton is is going to maybe have one of his crew guys kind of tell him exactly what happened. Not that Ricky's not good enough on his own to know it, but I think you may see a different outcome here. I think Ricky protects it as they head into turn one, and Garrett does not get the lead off turn two. So, again, the top four advance right now. So, Jonathan Davenport on the victory fuel pole here tonight at Ocala. Garrett Alberson, can he get the jump on Thornton at the Nutrient Act Solutions start zone? Uh, the pole sitter's the pace sitter. Inside row two, very impressive young man, Clay Harris and the veteran Tim McCready. At the Nutrient Act Solutions start zone, we are underway in Summit Racing Equipment E number two. Thornton gets that jump into turn number one. Alberson now, he'll try to do the same as Devon can make it stick down the back straight away on the bottom. Here comes McCready in 39. McCready needed a good run tonight. Struggled the first two nights ago to go to side by side for the runner-up spot. And he's got it at the line, Michael. Good race there, McCready now. What does he have down the back straightaway? Scott Faker, the crew chief on the 39 car, but the Anthony Burroughs 20 RT out in front. DJ Williams, Justin Tharp on the crew here in 2024 for the Lucas Oil Late Monitor Series. Alberson not giving up on second on McCready. Clay Harris runs fourth. Brian Shirley is fifth. Ricky Thornton Jr. 29th career win on Saturday night in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Out in front. Meanwhile, Alberson trying to get around Shirley. The deficit is 1.3 seconds from first to second. Harris still fourth in Shirley Riggs, Whitener, Smith, Gardner, and Ryan Scott. Halfway here. In need number two. Now Shirley trying to pressure Harris down the back straightaway. Clay Harris trying to make his third straight Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series race after never making a race. He had only had one start ever, and that was at East Bay in the reopening tour in 2020. And he didn't make the show that night because he was in a crate car. And they go to turn three. Off of four, it's still RTJ two to go. McCready second. Alberson third. Still a battle for Ford. The Barons' performance, one lap to go. 49 and 20 RT. Looks like they're going to win the first two heats of the night, Michael Rigsby. Thornton wins this race. He'll start right behind him as long as he clears the UNO LH scales. McCready, Alberson, Harris, final time, final turn. And the Martinsville Indiana driver will win the Summit Racing Equipment number two. Second spot is going to go to Tim McCready. Garrett Alberson, third. Clay Harris and that Brian Green crew chief six, three in a row. And car six makes the show. We leave Golden Isles with this RTJ, JD storyline of those two obviously having their moment at Golden Isles. When you know it, the two guys come out and win the first two heat races tonight. They'll be starting right near each other up front. Ben, Ricky didn't make the same mistake that uh, Tanner English did in that last heat race. Now it's almost like Ricky knows how to get around this joint. He's won here twice before. He was your winner a year ago tonight. Now he wins Summit Racing Equipment, heat race number two. He'll start third in the main event tonight. 
go after his second win of the year in his 30th career Lucas Oil Late Motor Dirt Series win. 40 total wins between multiple divisions last year. Well, Ricky, you and I talked in the pit area earlier. They changed the racetrack up a little bit. What do you? What did you notice out of it in that heat race that maybe you wouldn't have seen a year ago? Oh, I feel like you can you can actually use the whole racetrack getting into three. So that's a little different. Uh, I was kind of moving around a little bit. I didn't I didn't feel as good as I thought I was going to. So uh, who knows? Uh, there's a lot of good cars here. Uh, good spots going to be good for the feature. So got to give a big shout out to uh, Hooker Truck and Burger still, Coltman Farms, uh, Todd and Vicky, uh, everyone back home watching. Uh, hopefully we can have a good night. You might not have felt good, but you won by a straightaway, so smile a little bit. Ricky Thornton, G2, as we get set now, Earnhardt Technologies Group, Heat 3. Man, what a year it's going to be in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. We're along for every race here on MAV TV on Flow Racing. Earnhardt Technologies, number three, Ben, as he mentioned, uh, it'll be eight laps, top four transfer. The winner starts on the outside of the front row. It'll be Blair Nodor at the Renner South Dakota driver. Quick qualifier in Group B, the 76 car in turbo. Tyler Herb had a top 10 run going the other night till a flat tire. Can he start on the front row here tonight? We'll see what happens, Michael. Two great drivers in row two. Hood, it's Hudson O'Neill, uh, the Rocket One house car. And outside him, the 7T, Drake Tribeman from Pennsylvania. It'll be Matt Costner, the 66C out of Ridgely, West Virginia. The veteran Dennis Herb Jr., the 28, will start sixth out of Carpentersville, Illinois. Inside row four is a guy I had a long conversation with today about racing and promoting and everything else in between. The 40B of Kyle Bon Bronson from Brandon, Florida. And that very good-looking, very sharp capital house car, Tony Jackson Jr. in the 25 outside row four. Don't tell me he misses promoting, right? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little, a little bit. bit. Just a little bit. All right, Carson Brown, the youngster. 15 years old, he's at a new London, uh, North Carolina, the 28 car. And Dylan McCowan, last year's Lucas Oil MLRA Rookie of the Year in the 8 car. He hails out of Urbana, Missouri. So eight laps, top four transfer, Earnhardt Technologies, heat number three. I've correctly said in the last two heats what was going to happen in the first turn. Let me say right now, I have no earthly idea what's about <laughs> to happen in the first turn of this one. With uh, There's a snow drift alert in turbo. I'll let you call it. I'm not sure how this is going to go. All right. At the new Trunag Solution start zone, Michael Rigsby, it will be Blair Nodorf and Tyler Herb. We are underway. The winner starts on the outside of the front row alongside David Porter and Herb as Nodorf got out of shape in turn two. Good move as he got down low. Tyler Herb out in front. Turbo had a great race car on Saturday night. He would have had a top 10 if not for a right rear flat with eight laps to go in that best performance number one. And meanwhile, down to turn number two, down the back straightaway, here comes Drake Troutman at seven. Love to see him run for rookie of the year, wouldn't you? Drake Troutman is a great young man, great family. Lost his dad a few years ago. Lori, I know she's at home. She's coming down to East Bay next week, running in third. Blair Nodorf runs in fourth. Tyler Herb. The 2022 Gateway Dirt Nationals winner in the turn number one. And that best performance rocket is O'Neill slips up in turn number two. He'll lose ground. Last time it was four tenths of a second. And it's going to be much greater than that here this time around at the halfway mark. Four down and four to go for the new Waverly, Texas driver. Yeah, it's over one second now. O'Neill's second travel and third. No door runs in for it. Blair had a good run on Saturday night, made the show here. He'll do all the Speed Weeks races down here at Georgia, Florida. Tyler, three to go for a heat race win. Good Tyler. Breakthrough here tonight at Ocala. Solid in that one car off a turn for two laps to go. Leading the defending Lucas Oil champion, the defending World 100 winner, Hudson O'Neill's cut it down. It was down to six tenths of a second. It's going to be even closer to that as they're going to take the Barron's performance. One lap to go off at turn number four. Herb is hanging on a pair of one cars. Herb and O'Neill, a pair of rockets into one. O'Neill, does he have one last shot around the dog leg? And at turn three, Herb about two car lengths ahead. Final time around. And here they come off of four. O'Neill gives it a charge, and Tyler Herb's on the front row here tonight at Ocala. O'Neill is second, Troutman third, no door, finishes in fourth. So a good race there, and Michael, he got the lead. No Dorf got up out of the groove in two, and he took the lead. Yeah, it's listen, it's night three of the Lucas Oil season. He, he's a victor. He's excited to talk to Ben. He's down there already with our own Ben Shelton. 
Well, the winner of Earnhardt, Earnhardt Technologies Group, heat number three, Tyler Erb, 20 career Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series wins. One last year on tour that came at East Bay Raceway Park during the VLAN Winter Nationals. Three overall wins on the year. Turbo, you got the win right there, but it looked like you had your hands full late in that heat race. You're going to start outside front row. What kind of adjustments do you need to have a shot at the win? Uh, I mean, just drive better in three and four. They were telling me to get to the bottom down there. I guess Huddy probably was pretty good. So just feels good. Got a shout out to, you know, Kaiser, Integra, little Brian, DJ, um, Cody for working hard, Richard for flying in to help keep us going. Shout out to Eric, everybody. Um, starting on the front row makes it a lot easier. So uh, we've done half our job. Just need to be better in the future. All right, Tyler Herb, he'll start outside front row for tonight's main event. One heat left to go, Simpson Race Products, heat four. James, quickly before the lineup, don't sleep on it. It's race three, it's a heat win. Turbo needed that, right? It's Absolutely. been scuffling a little bit. Tough year last Absolutely. year, didn't have a great Wild West shootout. This is big for him to start up front in this one tonight. Looking for his 21st career win, Michael Rigsby in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, former Rookie of the Year. All right, fourth and final lead, Simpson Race Products, heat number four. It'll be eight laps, top four transfer. The winner will start alongside Ricky Thornton Jr. here tonight in row two of the 40 lap, a main. On the pole will be Mikey Marler, the 157. He is out of Winfield, Tennessee, and Cody Overton in the Dave Stein TriStar Promotions entry out of Thompson, Georgia in 97. A row two looks like this, one of the best looking cars on the property, that 19M of Spencer Hughes from Meridian, Mississippi, and the O Show, Jimmy Owens, number 20, outside row two. Two drivers that have top teams on Saturday night, that'll be Devin Moran in 99 out of Dresden, Ohio, and Ross Robinson in the 70s out of Georgetown, Delaware. I'm not going to make a comment on Daniel Adams' car looking like John Gills. We'll just say Daniel Adams starts inside row four, uh, and he said, Ethan Dotson, the Bakersfield, California driver outside. Kylan Garner in the US 128s out of Neosho, Missouri. And Logan Hit, cousin of the late Tim Hit, the two star, drove an open trailer all the way down from Buckhannon, West Virginia. He's going to go to East Bay next week for the first time in car two star. I, His I, dad, seen, Shane Hits, here, the defending yeah. track champion at Elkins. I've seen 100 Virginia. tweets that, you know, yep. certainly Logan Hit must be related to Tim He's Hitt, right? A cousin, Former yes. Fairbury track record yes. holder, Tim Hit for a very long time. Popped in there with the Summer Nationals and Mark Richards in the house car one year, late 90s, I think it was. That uh, That's 68 with the checker. Oh, oh, All-time great looking race Was car. it one out it. of the ballpark at Cherokee, was yes, it? I think it so, out yeah. of the ballpark at Cherokee. Just one of the great looking race cars, Ben, like you said, of all time. Like Shane Clayton and Deer Creek last year, right? <laughs> right Out right. of the ballpark in Jackson Heist the other night at Golden Eye. Jackson hopefully will be back with us at Alltech coming up this weekend. Mikey Marler in the Skyline Motorsports entry at the Nutrient X Solution Start Zone, the 157. Three-time Lucas Oil, Knoxville Late Model Nationals winner, look at turn two. Man, they got bunched up there. Spencer Hughes and Devin Moran as they come off of turn number four. Down the straightaway, it's Marler out in front. Cody Overton in the 97 car in his first full year in a super late model over from the Bruce Kane racing entry. Down the back straight, we got a battle before it. Into the dog leg to three, Ross Robinson going at it with Spencer Hughes off a of turn four. Mikey Marler still leads. It's hard to believe we've been going to Knoxville for what, 20 years now? And Marler's the only driver to win it three times. He was, was he second last year? He might have been second last year. I think I that's know, right. I know a website. <laughs> Out of two, it's Mikey Marler, the 157. Now to turn number four, halfway here in Simpson Race Products, heat number three. Devin Moran started back in fifth. He is second. Spencer Hughes back in the fourth. Robinson Owens runs in sixth off of turn four. Still showing away is Marler. Today's his birthday. Today is his birthday, 46 years old. He was second a year ago behind Thornton. <laughs> Two to go. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mike Marler, because he's going to start fourth if this hangs on and he goes to the UNO8 scales okay. And Mike Marler dominating here in heat number four. Simpson Race Products, heat number four. And we got a caution. A Dave Warren Power Sports caution out, and it's for Cody Overton. 
the driver who is running in second place, Michael Rigsby, and he may have a tire down. Ben Shelton, he does in the Heartbeat Hot Sauce Hot Pit. Yeah, he's going to make his way down to the Heartbeat Hot Sauce Hot Pit. Cody Overton, tough break, man, because he had a great qualifying effort tonight, and he's got a right rear flat on the number 97. The TriStar Engines and Transmissions entry comes to the attention of the crew. They'll get a change, so I have to go to the back of the pack. But right now, the birthday boy, Mike Marler, looking really good out in front. Devin Moran, always a hard charger here, sitting in second. And Michael, don't look now, but Ross Robinson has climbed up to third. Another good run right now for the Georgetown Delaware driver. Hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to keep harping on it until Ross Robinson doesn't keep driving his way into the features. This Rick Eckert's never leaving this team. <laughs> he's never leaving. He's going all year. Cody Overton, by the way, not only the flat tire, he saw he had a little left front damage that one of the crew guys was playing with there. A little contact between him and Devin Moran as they headed into turn one. It's tight going into turn one here. There's a little bit of a tail whip from the 99. Yeah, it is. Kylan Gardner down here as well, the Neosho Missouri driver, and I think his fun meter just pecked out a little bit early. They're going to run all tech and at least the first three at East Bay. Well, this father-in-law, Chris Hawkins. Chris practiced here last night, and he said, you know what, I'm going to be honest. I learned real quick, this might not be the racetrack for me. So he elected <laughs> not to race tonight. They'll try again at all tech. Uh, Kylan will be racing in here tomorrow, but again, just two laps left in this one. Mike Marler leads the way. And they'll be back on the Lucas Oil MLRA Tour this year full time with Kylan Garner and Chris Hawkins. All right, Marler out in front. So again, Moran will now be second. Again, Moran started fifth. And they're running third, Robinson and Spencer Hughes in fourth. Jimmy Owens is fifth. Final heat of the night for the Lucas Oil A Model Dirt Series. 2B mains coming up. We'll take the top three out of that. Settle up on provisionals based on last year's final points. And then we'll get to this year's. And yeah, Jimmy got shuffled, shuffled yeah. out of the deck there on that initial start when you kind of Turn two can suck in as we've seen a couple times before. Jimmy just got uh, shuffled, shuffled out there. So Mike Marler, two laps to go. So we'll go back to the last lap. And we'll go with the Barrett's one. Barrett's performance, one lap to go coming up. Now Owens now. And the caution is still out. We got a car in turn four. And it's Cody Overton. Again, coming over from the Bruce Kane Racing. That's the car that Ryan Gustin has piloted the last few years. Dave Stein, TriStar Promotions. So they put Cody's 97 on the car. So we'll go back to the Nutrient Act Solutions restart zone. Two laps to go. The green, the white, and the checkered. To add four more, then we'll have 16 in the show. We'll take three out of... B main one, three out of B main two, down the main straightaway, Nutrient X Solution, three start zone, one to go. Next time around, we'll have the Barron's performance, one lap to go. Marler stretches it out down the back straightaway. Moran has a run in the 99 car. You know Moran loves his place as well. As they come out at turn number four, Marler drifts up the track. Here comes Devin Moran in car number one. The Barron's performance, one lap to go. It's not over yet. Marler slips up one bit. Ah, he looks good down the back straightaway. In the Greg Burning Sideline Motorsports 157. And Mikey Marler is going to start fourth here tonight in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Moran second, third is Robinson, fourth is Spencer Hughes in 19. So those four are good at the UNOH scales. Hughes fourth in the JCM Motorsports, Colton Miller 19M, Ross Robinson, the Dutch Star Motorsports 7, Devin Moran, the Double Down Motorsports 99. And the Skyline Motorsports 99, Michael Rigsby, out of Winfield, Tennessee, the Winfield Warrior, Mike Marler, your winner. Mike Marler, a 21-time Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series feature winner. Three wins last year, this year. He's going to be chasing a championship as he'll pull off the helmet. The driver of the Greg Bruning Racing Skyline Motorsports 157. Well, Mikey, first and foremost, happy birthday, my friend. And how about a win in the heat race to start fourth tonight? What do you think about your chances to try to get your first ever win here at Bubba Raceway Park or Ocala Speedway, as we call it now? Well, i got to th say thanks to all the people who wish me a happy birthday today. You know, it's the... Uh, got a lot more friends than I realize sometimes, so I'm thankful for all of them for sure. But, uh, yeah, well, got the heat race win there. Uh, car was really good. It was good last night in practice. And got a little slow start to speed weeks, but we the last couple of nights I feel like it's been, been coming better. So uh, definitely uh, thankful for that too. Uh, Mike Marler, he's going to win Simpson Race Products Heat 4. And, James, if you remember a few years back here, he was in the Bryson Motorsports entry, and him and Rick Eckert battling for the lead down the back straightaway. Didn't end so well. He's been close before. Perhaps tonight is the night he goes to Lucas Oil Victory Lane here at Ocala Speedway. 
We've had a lot of birthdays lately, right? Mikey Marler, Earl Pearson Jr., Brandon Shepard all in the last yeah, week. Yeah, Kevin Rumley. Just Kevin Rumley? Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you, Ben. Great job. So four heats in the books. We've got 16 in the show here tonight. All right, Thunderstocks. Gotta love it. Their heat race is coming up. You scared me for a moment. She first said it was 20, but it's 10. All right, their heat race. Here's your lineup. Starting on the pole will be the number 97. He's out of Inverness, Florida. That'll be Philip Rook. On the outside will be Jimbo Warden. He's out of Ocala, Florida in car five. Row two will be Quentin Steedley. He's out of High Springs, Florida, the 11S. And on the outside will be Jordan Appleby. He's out of Ocala, Florida in the 69A. The next row will be row three. Justin Scarberry. He's out of Riverview, Florida, the 24. Rich Pratt out of Anthony, Florida, nine. And in Picayune, Mississippi's Doug Nastassi. Is it Nastassi or Nastassi? Like Eagley Nastasi, the former tennis player. We'll go with it either way. He's in the SOS. Bubba Durbin, he's out of Ocala, the 12J. And Jason Gamble, the 21. He is also out of Ocala, Florida. 2B Mains coming up next for the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Again, we'll be back here tomorrow night. Same time, same station, same place at Ocala Speedway, the rebranded facility here in ocala florida can't wait to come on out if you're in the vicinity it's always better to come out live and then